Early Japanese swords were based on straight-bladed styles originating in China or Korea, but legend has it that the first true samurai swords were produced around 700 A.D., and by 900 A.D. had developed the form that we would recognize today. The swords produced by the Japanese smiths over the past thousand years are deservedly regarded as the pinnacle of the sword maker's art. While greatly admiring and in some cases emulating the traditional techniques of the great Japanese smiths, the availability of modern steels and requirements for safety and efficiency have caused Hanwei to strive for a balance between traditional and modern forging methods. Hanwei's range of samurai swords employs several different steels, depending on the sword's application. A number of blades are made in the traditional way, by selecting material from the kara and heating with charcoal during the forging process. Core steel and skin steel are selected for their carbon content, and each is stacked and folded multiple times to eliminate impurities and provide an even dispersion of carbides in the billet. The skin steel and core steel are then welded together and forged into a blade. Other folded steel blades are made by combining two modern high-carbon steels that again are folded together multiple times before being forged into a blade. Monosteel blades are forged from a billet of modern high-carbon steel specially selected for its functionality in a heat-treated state. After forging, the scale is removed and the blade is shaped roughly to the required dimensions. At this stage, the blade is still in the annealed, soft state, and the blade is straight. A special clay is then applied by hand to the blade, using a thin covering near the edge and a thicker layer over the rest of the blade. The clay covering between the edge and the ridge line is sculpted at this point. And this process will determine the shape of the hammon or temper line. The blade with its clay covering is heated to a predetermined temperature and quenched in a water bath. The shape and continuity of the hammon, the sori or blade curvature, and blade straightness are all determined by the skill exercised in quenching. The sori is then adjusted, if necessary, to set the point of balance and the point of percussion. Blade geometry and surface finish are determined by the sword's intended function. Heavy cutting, fast cutting, multiple use, and iaido all require different geometry in terms of length, weight, balance, curvature, percussion point, and finish. All these factors must be taken into consideration from forging to final polishing. Weight and balance are key factors for any sword, as these, more than any other properties, affect the handling of the sword in relation to its application. The he or groove in a blade is often a most useful feature, as it can be used to adjust both weight and balance. Generally, the quality of a blade is judged by its degree of finish in terms of the definition of the shinogi, or ridgeline, the kasaki, the hammon, and the ji. First impressions are important, and the skill and experience of a polisher is quickly revealed to the trained eye. Japan, 
If the blade is the soul of the samurai sword, the fittings are its lifeblood. Without the fittings, the blade would simply be a piece of inanimate art, maybe not a good thing for the forging smith or the polisher to hear, but nevertheless true. The combination of the blade and its fittings gives the sword functionality and purpose and reveals the spiritual beauty of the Japanese sword. The typical Japanese long sword can be classed as either a tachi or a katana. Usually the armored samurai who fought on horseback would wield a tachi, while the katana was typically used for fighting on foot. Thus the tachi evolved as a slashing weapon with a relatively large blade curvature. While the katana was straighter for ease of drawing and use in thrusting as well as slashing to meet the needs of the foot soldier. This is a typical samurai sword. Although hundreds of thematic variations occur, the basic style of its fittings in terms of both materials and structure has changed little over the course of centuries, thus making the sword uniquely Japanese and instantly recognizable. This is the tsuba or guard. Apart from its obvious value as a hand protector, the tsuba invariably sets the decorative theme of the sword. This tsuba features a nanako or stippled ground with metal inlays. This is called fuchi and kashira. Their theme followed the tsuba generally. These washers are called seppa. They are fitted on each side of the tsuba and vary in thickness so that the tsuka or handle is held tightly on the blade. Most of the tsuka of samurai swords are made of wood covered in ray skin with a rice paper liner and then bound tightly with the tsuka ito or handle wrap. The tsuka ito, which is traditionally made of cotton or silk, provides a secure grip and fixes the minuki at the desired position. There are many wrapping configurations, but this one is the most common. The tsuka is fixed to the tang of the blade by one or two mekugi, which are pegs made from bamboo. The minuki again is a themed decoration positioned on the tsuka so as to locate the hand in the optimum position. The saya or scabbard is made of two pieces of wood which are carefully fitted around the blade and then joined together by being wrapped in cambric. The cambric then receives many coats of lacquer and is polished repeatedly until a beautiful deep polished finish is attained. These pieces, the kurikata, koiguchi, and kojiri, are typically made from buffalo horn. The traditional sageo is made of silk and hand braided, and patterns and scenes are often included in the weave. The sageo has two functions. It is used to bind the sleeves of the kimono during battle to keep them out of the way. And it is also used to secure the saya to the obi or waist belt. The kurikata provides an attachment point on the saya for the sageo. The habaki provides a positive seat for the tsuba as well as being the interface between the sword and the saya. The fit of the sword in the saya is important, as a loose fit can cause inadvertent loss of the sword from the scabbard, while too tight a fit will make drawing the sword difficult. As wood is a natural material subject to wear and climatic influences, the fit must be adjusted often. A loose fit is adjusted by gluing thin wood shims in the mouth of the saya, while a tight fit can be adjusted by careful filing of the inside of the mouth. Shorter swords, which had specific uses for the samurai, are the wakizashi, which is normally associated with the katana and the tanto, which was often carried as an adjunct to the tachi. The cutting ability of a quality samurai sword in the hands of a skilled practitioner is second to none due to the attention paid to blade geometry and edge hardness. 
Devotees of cutting with the sword, seeking to attain perfection, must develop a complex set of physical and mental skills that can only be properly learned from a master and retained by constant practice. The forging and construction of Japanese swords has become steeped in tradition and attempted change is often considered as rebelling against perfection. However, the forces of progress must inevitably affect the methods of the past. We believe that further research involving modern materials and technology can result in improvements in perfection and an even wider adoption of the culture of the Japanese sword.